Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Michelle, Kimberly, and Vanessa. Good morning. Good morning, Elena. Good morning. Good morning. All right, listen, um, come on in this morning. I am uh, live on other platforms this morning. I'm Facebook Live as well. And um, the, the I ask all you guys to text tag and share with someone. Let them know that we're on live this morning. And um, please inform them, inform them that we do our uh, AM and M every Tuesday through Friday. So God bless you. Blessings to all of you. Listen, I am glad to be back. I'm excited to be back. Much rest and relaxation. Uh, thank you for uh, your patience and thank you for allowing me to uh, get going for a minute or two. And uh, man, God is speaking. God is speaking. God is talking and God is moving. Um, there's a move of God that God is releasing in the atmosphere. That's phenomenal. That's going to blow our minds. Um, and so while away, I got some, you know, just got some family time and some downtime. And, um, and so I'm excited. It's always imp important and I'm learning more and more, uh, blessings to all of you. I'm learning more and more, um, uh, how to do that. And so we love you, Irma, Beverly. Shamika, Michelle, Cynthia, Tayshawn, hey, Brother Covington, Yvette, Brenda, Nia, Deacon Bailey, Adrian, Barbara. Man, I see all you guys. Love you much. I'm calling your names because I miss you this morning. Uh, I'm calling your names because um, I'm always uh, happy to happy to uh, get away and do and 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 get rest. But I'm also always excited to come back. And so uh, this morning I'm live on all the platforms. So 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 you must know that I'm talking about something that I feel like we need to talk about. I'm talking about something that I feel like the body of Christ need to talk about. And I don't want you to go nowhere. What I want you to do, I want you to hit up your friends. I want you to hit up your family. Let them know that I'm on live. Listen, I'm only going to be about 30 minutes. I'm going to try my best to, to stay within the perimeters of 30 minutes, within the time frame of 30 minutes. Um, however, listen, there's something in my spirit that I need to drop in your spirit that I believe that prophetically God is saying are concerning relative, relatively, relative to the time that we're in. And so um, I just want to drop that on you this morning. Uh, young people, my millennials, my uh, young people, listen, stick with me this morning. I have something to say, and I think, we, I think we want to hear that, okay? All right, God is speaking. All right, listen, God bless you for myself and my wife. We love you, love you dearly, and thank God for all of you. Let us pray this morning. Father, in the mighty, matchless, and majestic name, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is once again, we come to you, and we say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for this time of sharing and thank you for this opportunity. God, we pray that you would bless your people. Open up our eyes and our ears and our hearts. It is in Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. Again, God bless, God bless all of you and blessings to you and yours. I pray that you and your family are in much safety, health, wealth and prosperity as, as you can possibly have. And God is overflowing blessings in you and your family's life, okay? All right, listen, I wanna dive right in and I wanna get started. This morning, I wanna to talk, to, talk to you about something that I believe that has really been affecting the body of Christ. And I wanna to talk to you from the perspective of love. I wanna to come to you with love and compassion. And I want you to know that uh, uh, God is not a God of condemnation. God is not a God of condemnation. And I believe that the body of Christ, we must understand that. And I believe that God has prophetically positioned the body of Christ and those of us that are born again believers and that are filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of even speaking in tongues. I believe that God has strategically placed us into, watch this, into existence and in time for such a time as this. I believe that this is a high time for us as prophetic voices and I'm not talking about just prophets, but I'm talking about prophetic voices. I'm talking about the gift of the prophetic, the gift of prophecy throughout scripture is more than an office. It's all about conviction. It's all about 
the gift of the spirit and is all about being relative to uh, those that will exalt and encourage. I believe that those of us as prophetic voices, it is time for us to understand that we are on assignment and that the assignment that we have is challenging. We know it's challenging. And so and so this morning I wanted to talk to you um, and because my inbox has been like on fire, my inbox, and I'm thinking about doing something else. I'm really, I'm literally thinking about doing something else and the Spirit of the Lord is really leading me to do something else. My inbox has been like on fire uh, with, with this. And, and this morning, I want to talk to you about the, the sacred, the sacred and the secular, the sacred and the secular. And, um, and I'm not going to refer to any names. I'm not going to refer to any names. I'm not going to refer to any preachers. I'm not going to refer to any um uh, any any secular music or songs or anything, but I just want you to hear me out. Uh, I want to read a scripture to you, and and I want you to hear this scripture. The scripture is coming from the Gospel of Saint Mark, Saint Mark's Gospel, the thirteenth chapter. <clears throat> excuse me, the twenty the twentieth to the twenty third verse. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom He hath chosen. He has shortened the days for the elect's sake. Watch this. And then if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall arise and shall show signs and wonders, signs and wonders, false prophets, to seduce if it were possible, if it were possible, if it were possible even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all these things. God's word is already blessed. I, 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 I am concerned as to where we are in the body of Christ. I am concerned as to just exactly where we are. And, and let me share something with you. This is no time to be judging other folk. This is no time to be saying that I'm right and you're wrong. It has literally been disturbing to me and it has literally disturbed my spirit to see online and on the digital platform how pastors and preachers are literally arguing back and forth openly in front of the world to debate scripture and text and to fuss back and forth at one another and to argue and debate back and forth uh, uh, at one another and not considering, not considering those for whom nothing has been prepared, those who do not know who Jesus is, those who do not know, do not know who, who, what salvation is all about. And it has bothered me. And even in the world, um, the world is the world. The world is the world and the world is going to be the world. But I want you to understand something that we have a we have an obligation as believers and born again and and <clears throat> and spirit filled leaders <clears throat> excuse me and pastors during this time to display and exhibit the love of Christ none of us are perfect all of us got something all of us got something all of us got as my mom used to say all of us got some junk in our trunk and I promise you, I got some. I promise you, I'm not perfect. I promise you, I, I, I fight every day. I fight as a believer every day. I fight as your pastor, as your leader. I fight. There are things I have to fight against. If I don't fight against them, I won't win. And, and that's what you have to understand. Let me tell you how I got here. I got here because someone asked me, um, was it okay to listen to a particular artist or was it okay to, to listen to particular music? And... Um, and then uh, I had two or three others to chime in concerning music. And they were asking me from the perspective of R&B and, um, and, 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 and hip hop and some of the things that have been existing. And, 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 and this is the way I got here. And, and let me give you a very clear understanding of how and when and what you should be listening to, okay? Because, because you have to understand that music is worship, whether it's gospel music or whether it's hip hop or whether it's R&B or whether it's country, it does not matter what genre of music it is, music is worship. 
And what you have to understand that when you do sing the lyrics of a song, you do worship because it is musically directly directed, watch this, at a particular origin of worship. It comes from, from a particular origin of worship. So in other words, um, that song was created from, watch this, a particular person who originated that song out of a particular spirit. So, so, so listen to what I'm about to tell you. Now, when that song lingers and borders on the line of sinful activity, then that song is no longer to be, watch this, incorporated in your spiritual worship. In fact, it is not even to be incorporated into your walk with God. In fact, you shouldn't even be listening to it because it's going to disturb your spirit and it's going to come against your worship. And, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I want you to hear what I'm about to tell you, because see, many of people just try to, you know, and, and, and the church and, and the church, we, we've been guilty of we've been we've been guilty of misrepresenting who God really is, because God is a God of love and God embraces everyone. God embraces us all. Um, when 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 you have to when you have to. Uh, make sure or distinguish between what you're going to listen to and what you're not going to listen to. You have to use discernment. You have to use your conviction. Well, if you have not been born again, if you're not filled with the spirit of God, you don't have any conviction. And so the enemy, watch this, he traps us with it and he causes us to expose our spirit to something that's going to be a hindrance to our spirit and cause us to think a particular way. Because worship is designed for you to bow and for you to submit. And so whatever you're listening to and whatever spirit it was created from, you are now submitting yourself to that particular person or those persons. Or watch this, it's, it, if it's geared from a satanic place, a demonic place, a dark place, you're literally bowing your spirit to that. I want to tell you something that's going to be hurtful. And I, got, I have some musicians up here. I'm, I'm going to tell you something that's going to be hurtful. A lot of gospel music is not holy. It's not sacred. A lot of gospel music is not sacred. It's not holy. And 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 you can you can you can say what you want. You can think what you want. You can say, Bishop, you've been to no, uh, uh, no. We're in a time where the enemy is this. He's he's deceitful. He's decept. He's he's de he's deceiving and he's manipulative. And he's trying to manipulate and he's trying to deceive us to cause us to fall back. I said us, I make it inclusive because the Bible said it will fool the very elect if it was possible, if it was possible. But it is not possible to fool the elect because the elect has been, watch this, empowered um, with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And you've got to understand that when the lyrics go south, you, you, you turn it off. Let me say that one more time. When the lyrics go south, watch this, you turn it off. You have, you cannot afford to expose your spirit to something that is not, watch this, uplifting and something that is not, watch this, minister, Pastor Rondell, good morning, Pastor, and that is not edifying to you, watch this, and to your mind and to your spirit. Now, listen to what I'm about to tell you, and I want you to hear me. I'm going to give you five, I'm going to give you five reasons, five reasons to help, to help you understand the sacred and the secular. I want to give, I'm going to give you five reasons. I, I have five scriptures for you this morning, and I'm almost finished. I'm really almost, almost finished. When the enemy, because it, we're in the last days, he realizes that he can use certain influential people, and I'm talking about from the secular world. Now, when you start talking about secular, you're talking about worldly. When you start talking about sacred, you start, you're talking about holy. I'm talking about from the secular world, and I'm talking about, watch this, from the church, from the body of Christ. The enemy is literally using influential people, watch this, to disrupt and to destroy our worship. Okay, now, uh, now listen. Now, I, I, I would go deeper. If I had the backing and the security, I would go deeper. I, I promise you I would go deeper. And if I was to go deeper, it'll blow your mind. It, 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 it has to be, it has to be something that, 
because I love music. Man, I love all kinds of, listen, I, I love music. I love listening to music. But there are certain music, there are certain songs I can't walk around singing. I can't even listen to it and get it in my spirit because it disturbs my Holy Ghost. It disturbs my spirit. Even if my flesh wants to listen to it, my spirit becomes disturbed. And my spirit causes me, watch this, the Holy Spirit on the inside of me, me being filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit causes me to come against that. It's just like any other sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's just like any other sin. It's just like the sin of fornication, the sin of adultery. And it's like, the, it's like, it's like, it's like uh, hate, jealousy, anger. It's like any other thing. If it comes against your spirit and disturbs your spirit, watch this, then you ought not to do it. And the Bible says, he who sinned willingly, there remains no more sacrifice according to Hebrews. So somebody said, well, Bishop, while you're here, while you're talking about that, I'm talking about that because what the enemy is doing, he, the, the Bible says in the last days, there will be a great falling away. Let me tell you how the falling away is going to come. The falling away is not going to come as you think. The falling away is all, all, already literally taking place. See, whenever God is going to do something or whenever there is, there's a major move, there will always be influential people that are raised up. God will raise up influential people. And it does not matter if it's sacred or secular. He will raise up influential people. And what happens in the body of Christ and what happens in the world is that we tend to follow these influential people. See, you can't mix secular and sacred and expect to be sanctified. Let me say that one more time. You cannot mix. You cannot mix. Listen to what I'm about to tell you and teach you. You cannot mix secular and sacred and expect to be sanctified. In one sense, you're talking about you want to drop it like it's hot. In the other sense, you want to talk about you're saved and sanctified. It does not mix. What it does is it contaminates your worship, disturbs your spirit, and causes your emotions to be, watch this, offset simply because you are not at the place where you are able to receive and distinguish. My, my mama used to say, eat the, uh, eat, the, eat the meat and spit out the bones. My mama used to say the way you eat fish is to eat the meat and you spit out the bones. Well, you can't spit the bones out if you don't have the sense of, the, the sense of, of, of touch and the sense of feel and you're able to identify with what's, what's, what's the bone and what's the meat. See, the problem in the body of Christ is, and the problem with so many people is, you're trying to distinguish between sacred and secular, and you don't know the difference between sacred, sacred and secular. You, you, you're, uh, what's the word? Co uh, compartmentalization. Compartmentalization. Yeah, I want you, that's the word. Compartmentalization. You, 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 what we do is we're saved on Sunday, and we're using God and Holy Ghost on Sunday, and then the rest of the week, we're, we're going we're going secular and we're doing whatever we want to do. It does not. I promise you, listen to me and hear me. And I'm not and, I, and, and I'm not trying to judge anyone. I'm not trying. It does not work that way. Like it don't work that way. And you're going to have to come to a point where you're not going to be accepted over a particular issue. You're not going to be. And it's my job as your as your as your prophetic voice. It is my job to help you realize and recognize what you should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. And after that, it is up to us. It's up to you and the Holy Ghost, because now God will hold us accountable for what we know. Let me let me share some things with you, because I believe and, and it says it will fool the very it will fool the very elect if it was possible. Who? OK, now watch this. Now, ask yourself in that particular pericope or that particular text, who is it fooling? Who is it fooling? Who is it fooling? It's the, the Bible says it will fool the, the. In fact, the Bible says he's shortening the days for the elect. Say, did you see about four or five days ago where, excuse me, where the earth rotated the fastest that it had ever rotated? Some 20, some 20, uh, some two seconds off. It was some two seconds off. And listen, if you've been listening to me, if you've been listening to the teachings, I have been sharing with you that we're in the season of acceleration. We're in the season of acceleration. Time is being accelerated. The blessings of the Lord is being accelerated. The will of God is being accelerated. Watch this. It is literally being accelerated. Therefore, our maturity and our discipline has to be accelerated. Why? To be able to receive, watch this, what God, the download that God has for us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so we have to be mature. We have to grow up and be mature. And we can't be judgmental. Watch this. Just because, and the problem in the church is, that we see and we know what's wrong, 
But watch this. Everybody's sitting back and not saying anything because don't nobody want to operate in love. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, and, and all you have to do is pull people to the side and just talk to them and don't judge them. Don't go at people. That's the worst thing you can do is go at people. It's like the folk that's pro-life and out there, you know, picketing in front of the uh, that's, that's anti-abortion against abortion and out there picketing in front of the Capitol. And they out there, well, so you killing him, you doing this, you didn't. Watch well, it. That's not going to help anybody. That's not going to witness to anybody. That's not the love of Christ. That's not the compassion. See, there are three things that you got to have when you witness, when you start witnessing and you start representing Christ. Number one, you have to be Christ like. What does that look like? It looks like the love of God. It looks like the love of God. And sometimes the love of God calls, calls for radical, radical love. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number two, you have to be compassionate. You have to be compassionate and considerate. When you start witnessing, you can't go out there and just tell them, oh, you're going to die and go to hell. Man, those folks already know that they, they that they are in trouble. They already know that they're sent. You can't you talk to. You, listen, we know that homosexuality, lesbianism, we know all of that is wrong. All of that is in, in the Bible. We know that is wrong. But you can't be so judgmental that you go you go up and point in those folks face and tell them, oh, you're going to die. Go to hell. You just I had an incident in church where one of my lead people, one of my lead elders, never forget it some years ago. Man, she's she going to get in the little, little, little young lady face and tell her, oh, you're going to hell because you lesbian, you know you gay, you know. Man, listen, the girl was going to beat her down in the parking lot. We had to, we had to, she didn't even know it. The lady didn't even know it. We had to, we had to make sure the girl did not beat the other lady down in the parking lot, which was an elder, simply because she went to a point in her face, telling her, oh, you're going to go die, go to hell because you this and that, you know. Listen. A higher way is a place for all people. I want all people coming to highway. And I do have all people come to highway. I come to highway. I'm not, I'm the pastor. I'm the leader. I've got issues myself. People, listen, all walks of life come to highway. Why? Because I believe it's a place where people can heal. It is a place where people can be delivered and set free. They're going to want an elder. Elder Ivory said, yep, it, it happened. I'm telling you, it, it is a place where people can be set free. It's not a judgmental place. And I, and, and I try my best to teach from a place of compassion and love. And I want to tell you this. You're no better than nobody else. I promise you, you're no better than nobody else. Listen, you're just one prayer away. You're just one slip away. My, David said, my, my foot is all, had almost slipped. All right? We're one slip away. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, and I'm talking to you, and I want you to hear me. Listen, there are certain things in the world I see, I know it's wrong. It disturbs my spirit. There are certain artists I see, I know they're wrong. They disturb my spirit. There are certain preachers I see, I hear, I know they're wrong. It disturbs my spirit. And yes, I have to come back sometimes and teach rebuttals. Yes, sometimes I have to teach on particular doctrines and particular issues. Why? Because my job is to cover the people. My job is to my job is to make sure that I'm dealing with the people and I'm making sure that the people are experiencing healing. You can't experience healing in a hospital where people are totally, watch this, totally disrespectful, nasty, arrogant. You can't experience healing there. Why? Because your spirit is already, your body is already messed up. Your body is already physically messed up. Now they don't mess with your spirit. Now they don't mess with your mind. Now they have other motives. People have other motives. What I'm trying to tell you is this. Because you have to be Christ-like, you have to be compassionate, and then you have to be convincing and converted yourself. So, so let's talk about this. I'm going to give you five scriptures. I, I, I'm, you know, listen. If you want more, if you want more information like this, stick with me this week. Stick with me all week. I'm going to be teaching on this all week. All this week, I'm taking all this week. Go tell somebody. I am literally taking all this week, and I'm going to give you 35 to 40 minutes of teaching all this week, every morning for the next three mornings on this particular subject matter, because I believe that it needs to be dealt with. And I believe that it needs to be dealt with not only in talking in respect to with, with respect to the, 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 the secular world, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about from the body of Christ. Because I believe that there's some misrepresentation that we are experiencing in the body of Christ. And so the great falling away is coming from, listen what I'm about to tell you, the great falling away is coming from the influential people who are in the spotlight, who, had, who, who, who has captivated the audience and who's leading, watch this, watch this, and, and you, you, I'm about to say something, you, you're not going to like this, who's leading in likes and views on social media. They're leading in likes and views on social media. God told me something. God spoke something to me. I'm, listen, I'm going to teach something heavy tomorrow. I want you to be with me. 
they're leading in likes and views on social media. So watch this. And then they're leading in the pulpit on Sunday morning. So this is why you're going to see uh, uh, you're going to see pastors and preachers more so than ever standing up and saying, oh, my doctrine is wrong. My teaching is wrong. My teaching is off. It's the enemy placating the body of Christ and causing because if one leader who's leading 30,000 people decide to say that they are wrong about a particular issue or they come against a particular scripture or a particular teaching in the text. Within the, within, the, within the context of, with, of the Bible and the, and, and, and the teachings of scripture from Genesis to Revelation, you, we have just literally lost 30,000 people. No, 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 30,000 uh, 30, times three because each one influences three. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so this is how the fall in the way is coming. And this is why it's so imperative that we teach with understanding and clarity. Okay, I'm, listen, you know what? I'm out of time. I'm really out of time. Okay. I, I, okay. Listen, I tell you what, if you come back tomorrow morning, if you come back tomorrow morning, I'm going to give you some scriptures that I believe that it's going to be important for you to have so that you can go forth and understand the sacred and the secular. You can learn how the divide of the sacred and the secular, because listen, there is a divide. Listen, Jesus said, Jesus, he he he, he says something that was so heavy. He said something. He said something that that was so so heavy, and you need to know it. Listen, you need to know that either you're going to be for him or either you're going to be against him. You need to know that you're not going to be liked just because you're not going to be liked just because. Watch this. You try to make people like you. Like people that like you don't always like you. In fact, they will like you and then leave out of your face and talk about you. You are literally, we are literally in a time of influence. We are in a time where we represent, I want you to get this, where we rep, we're, we're going to represent, either we're going to represent Christ, watch this, and be, and be Christ-like as, listen, I'm not talking about perfection. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about just representing Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Or, watch this, we're going to be satanically influenced by the wickedness of the world. Are you hearing me? And so you have to make sure that either you represent Christ and that your love for Christ, your worship, are you hearing what I'm saying? Your worship experience, your, your walk with God. See, see, our worship and our walk with God, watch this, it gives us identity where we're going and who we are. And so the Bible, that's why the Bible says our lives are literally living epistles whereby men read daily. And so, and so what has happened is, is that we've had a group of people who somehow think which, which, which operate in tradition and legalism in the church. And I listen, I'm not even going to the five scriptures because my time is almost up. Who literally operate in, in legalism in, in the church and in the body of Christ. See, there's a separation and, and, and you literally have to understand that just because you, you're operating and you're living saved and you're loving God, that don't give you the right to judge nobody else. It, it, it does not give you the right to make somebody else feel bad, but it gives you the right to teach with simplicity and balance and give people understanding. The Bible says, that's right, uh, Elizabeth, the Bible says we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So there's going to be a separation. There's going to be a separation of the children of God, the sons of God, and the sons and, 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 the, and the children of darkness. There's going to be a separation. There is a separation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so what is sacred? What, what is sacred? What, what does sacred look like? What does holy look like? What does, what does, what does secular look like? What does the world look, 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 look uh, what the world looks like with, in, 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 in music, in our worship? And here's what I'm thinking about. I, I, God has given me so many ideas and, and I'm thinking about bringing some things together because I believe that we need to hear this and we need to be able to identify because a lot of people, and let me, and let me answer this. And, and I answered the, the, young, the, the person's question. I told them if the lyrics don't edify Jesus Christ and don't lift up Jesus, then we can't call it sacred. <laughs> so now some of our songs, even in our praise and worship or even, even in church, they're not sacred. So they're not sacred. I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a medley that I do, and I do it because 
sometimes the ice needs to be broken and the atmosphere needs to be broken because sometimes the, even the songs that we sing in worship service, they're not sacred because they, they come from the wrong place. See, you, you see, and we're going to talk about this. We have to talk about why was a song created? Where did that song come from? Why is that particular artist singing that? And why is scripture being displayed in that particular song? Why is scripture being mentioned in an R&B song? And what is the purpose for that scripture being mentioned in that R&B song? Because now we have to deal with the origin of worship and the origin of song, the origin of music. Because when we start talking about the origin of music, I was listening to a particular uh, debate. And I just wanted to listen to what they had to say. Very popular person. You would know who they are if I said it. And they were debating from the <clears throat> from the perspective of the origin of music and how music started in the Old Testament. First of all, music did not originate in the Old Testament. Music originated out of Ezekiel 28. Go and read it because the pipes and the, the Bible says, I think it's in, it, it's in Ezekiel 28, where it says the pipes and the horns. It was describing Lucifer. And, and that's where that's where some people try to de derive that Lucifer, Lucifer including myself. Uh, was the praise and worship leader. And that's not necessarily so because when you read the scripture, it does not give him an identity as the praise and worship leader. However, he was overseeing it and he was directing it in some type of way. And that's why the Bible says praise is coming for the upright and that we should always praise God and that the origin of music it does not start, did not start in the Old Testament. The origin of music started from heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It was created and originated in heaven. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so once we once we understand that and, and, and we understand the worship behind it and we understand how how it was created. Now we have an or now we have an identity and confirmation as to how we ought to approach it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So 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 the secular ought to be separated from the sacred. Oh, man, I'm teaching better than y'all shout. Let me say it one more time. The secular ought to be separated from the sacred. <clears throat> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excuse me. And one more thing. Let me, let me tell you this and I'm going to let you go. All right. I hope y'all are getting this. I hope y'all are getting this. Listen, come back tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to I'm gonna give you some scriptures that's going to bless you. And I'm going to teach you with something I believe that, that you need to know. The, 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 the problem in the church is, is that we think we so holy that we don't have no holes. Let me say that. I'm going to say it one more time. We think we're so holy that we don't have no holes. We don't have no holes. We don't have no empty places. We don't have no holes in our life. And I'm talking about holes. I'm talking about you don't have no issues. We have issues. We have issues. Watch this. And no, there are certain music. Um, and I was talking to a particular person. They were saying certain music was being played at a certain church during worship service. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I'm just like, you know, how can you play? Okay, let me give you an example. You are never coming the highway and Drake on, I'm doing a worship service and Drake being played in worship service. That's not going to happen. You're not going, we're not going to have Drake in our worship service. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, they can listen to Drake once they leave. Everybody can listen to Drake once we leave. But what we're not going to do, we're not going mix, to mix the sacred and the secular. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so, and so what happens is, is that um, we, 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 we mix it and then in the process of us mixing it, we want God to show up. I'm telling you, you don't have to create, create all those antics. And I, and I was listening to, I was listening to the particular person and they were a particular leader and they don't, and they were saying, and here's what they were saying. And I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to leave you with this. They said, well, it's okay to take an R&B song, listen to this, and I'm gonna let you go. They said it's okay to take an R&B song for an artist, to take an R&B song, listen to it, change up the music and the lyrics, watch this, and then use it as a worship song. Let me say it one more time. They were saying that it's okay to take an R&B song and, and take the lyrics and, and change the lyrics so that it can sound as though it's worshiping God and, and, and watch this 
Well, and, and, and say that it's okay. And he was, they were saying that it's okay. It's not okay. Don't, don't, don't listen. Okay. Let me tell you why it's not okay. Let me tell you the first reason why it's not okay. The first reason why it's not okay is the origin of it. That's the first, that's the first reason we, we're not even going to get into anything else. The origin of it. The second reason why it's not okay. All right. Listen to what I'm about to tell you is the lyrics of it. The lyrics of it, because you have to learn the song in order to change the song. So you're not going to tell me, watch this, that in learning the song, because remember, I told you it is the words and the lyrics of the songs that declare declaration to who is worshiping. So you have to be careful what you're saying. Have you ever been singing a song and you sung the song? You're like, oh, I can't sing that song. I can't sing that. Oh, hey, I can't say. Uh, hey, whoa. Hey, I can't say that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your spirit won't allow, allow you to say that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, 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 and watch this. Let me show you something. So in other words, the person or the artist is going to go in, learn that song so that they can change the words to the song and not be affected by the words from the song. I don't think that's not how it works. That's not, that's not how it works. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's like saying, you know what? I used to be an alcoholic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the bar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a drink and I'm going to make sure the drink, you know, drink don't bother me no more. That drink ain't, you just don't even, it, 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 it contaminates. It contaminates. And so, and so number one is the origin. Number two is the lyrics. Number three, okay, number three, I'm going I'm to tell you this. Is the meditation. I'm, uh, listen, listen to me. Is the meditation. See, see, in order to learn a song, you have to meditate on it. Oh, my goodness. Are y'all hearing me? In order to learn a song, you have to meditate. So number one, what is the origin of that song? Why, why, did, why did that particular artist make that song? And why, why are those lyrics in that song? Why, why did that particular artist make that song? And why are those lyrics in that song? Number two, number two, watch this. Not, not just the origin, but number two, the lyrics. Why are the lyrics? What, 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 why? Listen at the lyrics. So now you want me to say that and be edifying to God. It does not work that way. And then you're not going to tell me because I'm a meditator. I know how I meditate. And then after you learn the lyrics, meditation comes. Then when meditation comes, watch this, because this book of the law shall not pass out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. Then shall you discover great success. What you don't understand is the same way meditation work with the scriptures is the same way meditation work with the secular. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, I pray that something has been said. I'm cutting off. I'm at my 40 minute time limit. I'm cutting off. Will you do me a favor? Will you join me tomorrow? Will you join me tomorrow morning? Will you will you come in and set in with me tomorrow morning as I teach on this particular? It's going to be it's going to be the sacred and the secular part two. So I can give you some more scripture. Listen, the elect It's going to the Bible said it'll fool the very elect. If it was possible, the Bible says the days will be shortened because of why? Because we're in the season of acceleration. And that's why the earth rotated almost two seconds faster the other day than it has ever rotated before. Why? Because we're in the season of, 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 of acceleration. And so the sacred and the secular is, is clashing and it's supposed to clash. It's supposed to come. It's, it's, it's supposed to be challenging to our faith. This is the time. This is the dispensation. This is a dispensation that is going to separate the wheat from the tares. This is where we are now. We are, we are here and, and you have to understand that, that you need to know. And so, so, so what music do I listen to? Man, listen, nobody, listen, I was, I, I was, I was born out of the rap, the rap industry. Dang, diga, dang, the dang, the dang, diga. See, some of y'all don't know what that is, but but I got some old school folk here that know what dang, diga, dang, the dang, dang, diga. You know, I, I got some old folk here that know what I'm talking about. That's the original rap right there. That's the original rap. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, 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 but what what words are we saying? Even in the songs that 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 we used to sing, the music that we used to listen to. 
Is that is it what are, are those words degrading? Are those words are those words degrading to women? Are those words talking about killing, talking about shooting? Are those words laced with sin? Are those words laced with lyrics that are contrary to the will of God? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so I want you to come back. Come back, Nate. Come back the rest of the week because we're going to extend this beyond. We're going to extend this beyond just talking about music. And so I thought I would just bring that up because I had a couple of my young people ask me and they were in my inbox and they were asking me some questions. And so I want you, and listen, you can feel free to, you can do that as well. You can ask me, but I want you to get it and I want you to get it so that you have it, so that you'll be able to identify with what you should do and what you shouldn't do when it comes to listening to particular music. And that's all it is. It's a simpler, it's not complicated. So I don't have to hear, I don't have to, all I have, if once I hear the song, I know that I shouldn't even listen to it. Even though it might sound good to my flesh, I know that I shouldn't even listen to it. All right, listen, I love you guys. I thank you all for your for your, for your your hearts of understanding, being patient with me. Look, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this teaching. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this impartation this morning. Let us receive with meekness the engraved word of God, which is able to save our souls. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, there's a particular person. While I was ministering, there's a particular person. I don't know who this is. You are, you are in need of surgery. In fact, you they're talking about doing surgery this week. But the Lord says the x-ray is going to show that you're not going to need the surgery by the end of the week or, or next week. It's, it's this week, and but it's going to go into next week. The x-ray is going to show that you're not going to need the surgery. There's another person here. You just went back to pick up something that you, sh you, you, you dropped and you just went back and you picked it up. God told me to tell you that if you just lift your hands up and receive right now, that there is a deliverance taking place for your life in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you in Jesus' name. There's another person you at your on your job. There's a particular individual that has trying to be trying to connect with you, and you've been praying to God. or been trying to get with you. Been praying to God and asking God. Um, should you connect with this particular person? God told me to tell you no. Now let me tell you how you're gonna find how you're gonna know who this particular person is. And I don't know who they are, but they're always coming to you and talking to you about promotion. That's how you know. God said that's how you know. And you're gonna know. God told me to tell you that that particular person is not the person that you want to connect with. In the name of Jesus, there's a lady um, here. And uh, you're, you're, you're in your kitchen and there's something going on with your, I don't know if you're, it's your refrigerator or your stove and you're discouraged to a point where you, you feel like you ought to do something different. God says, don't be hasty in your decision making because it's going to cost you. God said, take your time and he'll lead you and he will direct you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, uh, Darlene, Darlene Thomas, I think I know, yeah, I know, I know Darlene. Darlene, God told me to tell you that the headaches, I don't know what these headaches are. It's, it's, like, it's like every now and then you get headaches or you have an anxiety attack. God, Darlene, God told me to tell you that he's healing you and he's delivering you right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, just receive it and walk in it and healing is yours. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Nia, amen. Nia said surgeons this week would not. Amen. Praise God. So, so listen, receive the word of knowledge, receive what God is saying, walk in it and uh, believe God. Um, we, we'll be back tomorrow morning. Listen, we'll be back tomorrow morning. I want you to be a part tomorrow morning. God bless. May heaven smile upon you. Um, I'll see you tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. God bless. All right. God bless you. God bless you, Karen, Latanya. Love you guys. Good seeing you. Charles, blessings to you. Darlene says she receive it. Darlene says she receive it. Amen. Receive it, Darlene. It's yours, baby. Amen. Yes, Pastor Rondell was up here this morning. I think he's still up here. Bless you, Pastor Rondell. We love you. Bless you, God, daughter. 
Bless all of you. Air hugs, everybody. Have a blessed and awesome day. Now, if you're on the if you on the other platforms, join us here. Go and subscribe to DLG Ministries YouTube channel. Go and subscribe to DLG Ministries YouTube channel. It's going to be a blessing to you. I promise you. Uh, you'll get some teachings and you'll get some things that will, that some teachings that will highlight and and uh, and give you revelation and impartation uh, for your soul. So God bless you. We love you. Love you too, baby. Luther, all the way. Amen. Brother Collins, all the way from Georgia. Amen. Blessings to you and the family. Uh, uh, Brother Collins, we got to catch up a little bit. Hey, I'll be in Georgia in, uh, I'll be back in Georgia in October. I'll be back in Georgia in October, uh, Brother Collins. So God bless. All right. Have a blessed and awesome day, everybody. We love you. Glad to be back.